Hey everyone, Dr. Frankie here with an exciting new knife consult for you on the Thierry Savidon Kiops. If none of those words sounded familiar to you, that's because I have not featured this guy on my channel, but maybe you're familiar with Thierry Savidon. He is a French knife maker. A few of the guys on YouTube have made some great videos on a knife that he makes called the Maximus. That's maybe his uh, flagship model. But today I have a knife called the Kiops, and that is spelled K-H-E-O-P-S. This is a smaller, more gentlemanly knife made with uh, CPM-154 and a hand-rub satin with titanium and carbon fiber with a polished and sandblasted handle finish. Uh, and so really nice little card that he includes here. You can go ahead and follow him on Facebook at Savidon Custom. Terry Savidon on Instagram, and here's his website, SavidonCustom.fr. Uh, as I mentioned, he is a French knife maker, and recently, thanks to my good friend Mike, who goes by at Blade on Instagram, he's also a fellow member of my podcast called the Knife Life Podcast. If you haven't been listening to that, I have. Uh, we have gotten into our second season of that now, but... Uh, he provided this knife along with a couple of other knives from French knife maker Philippe Georget. Uh, I have a video on these FIF 20 right here, the FIF 20, and I'm going to have a video on the Hi-Fi as well. By the time you see this, this video may be out as well. He sent me all three of these knives, and it's kind of refreshing to see these French makers and their restraint in their designs. I think that Something that uh, is really nice to see is someone that makes a very good knife very, very well. Uh, and to see just really high quality finish work instead of just flashy materials. I think that it's easy to get caught up in the world of flashy materials, myself included. I'm certainly victim to that in a lot of ways. But it's really nice to see a simple knife done extremely well. And I think these French makers have really captured how to do that beautifully. And this knife is no exception. The Kiops is a small knife, as you saw compared to those others, and it really uh, exaggerates the gentlemanly nature of these knives that Mike has sent along. Uh, let's go ahead and get some vital signs on this guy so we can see exactly what I'm talking about. Up front, you are getting a blade that is coming in right at 3.1 inches, just over three inches. I'm going to measure that here in uh, millimeters. You're looking right at 80 millimeters of blade length, 8 centimeters of blade length. Overall length, you're looking at 190 uh, millimeters, 19 centimeters. I'm going to take a look here. You're looking at about a 4.1 inch or four and a, almost 4 and a quarter inch handle with an effective grip area of about uh, 3.75 inches right there. So a relatively small knife. It's also quite thin. Uh, in both the handle and the blade stock. The handle here is coming in under half an inch at 0.494 and the blade stock is coming in at 129 thousandths. So nice thin little knife right here. Something else you can't really feel right now is the weight on this guy. The small amount of titanium and carbon fiber in the thin blade makes this thing a very featherweight 2.72 ounces. Very very lightweight knife. And so it really adds to the beauty of an everyday carry to have a small, thin, slicey, easy to carry lightweight knife. So let's go ahead and bring on another couple of knives for a size comparison. The Kiops is not a, uh, a short knife. It has a nice amount of length to it despite being rather thin. So you can actually see here that it does favor the pair of three, but maybe it's a hair longer than the Para 3 overall. And certainly you get more cutting length on this. You get pretty much as much cutting length as you do on the Para 2, almost. And certainly more than the 3 right here. Uh, you saw how it compared earlier in the video uh, to the Philippe Georget FIF 20. Uh, and then uh, we had the uh, Hi-Fi also from Philippe right here. So all very similar size profiles. These are three and a half inch knives here from Philippe. Um, just some other French alternatives right there. Let us go ahead and break this knife down anatomically. Take a look at this beautifully done CPM 154 blade done in a hand rub satin. His logo is a little bit loud, 
but it's reserved on this one. It's a little bit smaller maybe than I've seen on some other knives. This blade is done in a very, very fine hollow grind. It's not just a flat grind. It's actually a very, very slight hollow. And it makes this blade unbelievably thin behind the edge. I'll take you right down here so you can take a look at how thin that gets behind the edge. Maybe it's hard to show on video right here, but let's go ahead and get the calipers out for a little bit more of a physical representation, numerical representation. Certainly 0.17, that's a little bit, 0 .10, 0 0.014, incredibly thin, 0 0.015, incredibly thin behind the edge. For reference, the Para series comes in in the 0 .024 rather than the 0 .014 category. So incredibly thin and slicey blade, beautifully ground, hand done grinds. Obviously, these guys all do hand work, all done by hand, beautifully matching grinds, very tastefully done, uh, very useful blade shape. I'll call it a drop point, a modified drop point here, very unique swedge almost straight out to the front here. It's not a Warncliffe, but it has a certain sheep's foot style look to it, but it's a it's more of a drop point ultimately. Nice stabby, very fine tip. I found that this has been quite nice for very fine actions. This is a great letter opening knife. This is a great little pairing knife. This is something that's good for very fine but light duty work with that tip. Very, very nice to see there. Uh, <clears throat> beautiful plunge grind, nice little sharpening choil. Uh, this is obviously a flipper knife. You've seen me open this. It's got a nice uh, flipper design to it. It flows with the lines of the handle. These French makers understand the fusion of art and function, and they try to incorporate both. Uh, let's move back to the pivot. This is running on ball bearings, very, very smooth ball bearings in there. I've not taken this knife apart. It sort of doesn't really matter whether they're ceramic or steel, but they are very, very smooth. Take a look at the pivot collar right here. Beautiful carbon fiber pivot collar. Very thin and contoured to the handle. Very nice work right here. Carbon fiber may not be the easiest thing to make it look like that, and it's just exquisitely done. Let's go ahead and move back to the handle here. Beautifully done carbon fiber on top of titanium here. These carbon fiber scales you'll see are inlaid into this area that's cut out of the carbon fiber. Here is where you can sort of see that this is a handmade knife. Not 100% absolute perfection in the gaps, but beautifully done nonetheless and not noticeable unless you're looking at it in high resolution under a lens or up very close. Beautifully, beautifully done. Take a look at the spine of the knife here. Blue anodized titanium backspacer. Sorry, it's got a little dust in there. Let's see if I can wipe that out. There we go. Very easy to clean out. You can see it just wipes right away. A lot of people complain about this style of backspacer. I don't see the problem. It just uh, It's an artistic decision to do this like that, and I like it. It's very easy to clean out if you have the right tools. It has an incorporated lanyard tube on a sort of a, I'm not going to call it a skull crusher, but sort of a pointed tip at the back here, very stylized tip, in matching with the tip out at the front. What that does do is leave a small amount of the handle sticking out there. As you can see, the blade is certainly maximized. There's not very much overhang from the tip of the blade to the tip of the handle but they've included this little piece perhaps to prevent you from getting too close to that blade right here. The blade does not come close to the back right here. There's no way my finger could possibly touch the blade in the back. Take a look at the pocket clip. This is a milled pocket clip, very thin. Take a look at how thin that is. Very nice spring, very nice ramp, perfect amount of tension, beautifully done pocket clip. The knife does not ride too low or too high. With this little a stylized spike, you're going to get a little blue showing out of your pocket right there. Pretty neat. The action on this knife is a lot of fun. Very crisp detent. Very, It's a little bit on the lighter side, 
And so you can misfire it if you just fool around with it. But if you really just give it a nice flick, it opens and clicks and closes very, very nicely. This also includes a steel lock bar insert, something you don't often see on these handmade custom knives. Steel lock bar insert included with these titanium screws that are blue anodized as well. Very nicely done. I really enjoy the way that the knife opens and the blade drops close under its own weight. And that is a feat in and of itself because these small blades don't like to close down just like that. It's an incredible action and an absolute joy. Combining that with the lightweight, the beautiful looks, the amazingly ground blade, this is a beautiful knife. The Kiops by Thierry Savidon is a very classy knife with very nice accents and details. This is a, an ultimate gentleman's folder EDC. If you work in a high-end office environment, this would be a beautiful knife to have with you every day. It really combines the classy look of a European-style folding knife with the modern tactical look that all of us who are watching this channel might be into. I really enjoy this knife and I'm looking forward to learning more about Terry Savidan and maybe one day being lucky enough to get one of his knives myself. So thanks again to Mike at Blumenblade for letting us check this knife out. Amazing work. He doesn't make only one knife. He makes a couple of knives. So go and check out Terry Savidan's work at the uh, links I showed you earlier in the video. Go ahead and follow me here on YouTube. Click like and subscribe. Go ahead to Instagram and follow me over there as Dr. Frunky. If you want to help support my channel here and keep these videos rolling, you can become a patron over at patreon.com slash drfrunky. I really appreciate each and every one of you for watching. Thank you very much and take care.